There is still no timeline on the distribution of the single-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine after Health Canada flagged potential quality control issues in the U.S. And there is mixed messaging on who should get it. The National Advisory Council on Immunization recommends Johnson & Johnson for Canadians aged 30 and up, but also says some people might want to wait for Pfizer or Moderna. David Aiken reports. Vaccination is essential to end the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, but which vaccine to get? Politicians and most public health officials have been saying the best vaccine to get is the one you're offered first. But the doctors on the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, known as NACI, well, they have a different message. What we've said all along is that the mRNA vaccines are the preferred vaccine. The mRNA vaccines are Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna not AstraZeneca or Johnson & Johnson. Well, individuals need to um, have an informed choice to be vaccinated with the first vaccine that's available or to wait for an mRNA vaccine. But the implicit message from NACI to delay getting one vaccine in favor of another is the last thing frontline emergency room doctors want to hear. It's very frustrating to hear that recommendation. The recommendation should be and has always been by uh, physicians on the ground to take the first vaccine available to you uh, as soon as possible. Or public health officials battling the pandemic. The bottom line is take whatever vaccine you're offered. But for now, the first Johnson & Johnson vaccines, the first single dose vaccines approved for use in Canada are held up. A first shipment of 300,000 doses arrived last week, but Health Canada held them back over concerns that an ingredient may have been contaminated during their manufacture at a plant in Baltimore, Maryland. It's, it's certainly uh, it's sort of uh, being held in freezers in good condition and uh, until uh, obviously uh, Health Canada does its due diligence and uh, I can't give a timeline. I would, I would leave that to Health Canada. And so it may be Pfizer-BioNTech to the rescue, Two million doses of that vaccine are arriving in Canada this week and every week during the month of May. David Aiken, Global News, Ottawa. Herd immunity has long been thought to be a golden ticket that will allow restrictions to be lifted and life to return to normal. But a growing number of epidemiologists believe it is too tall an order and likely not achievable. Eric Sorensen explains why. More than half of American adults have received at least one vaccine dose, but the vaccination rate is falling. I do not plan on getting it unless I am forced. Vaccine hesitancy has slowed demand, even as COVID variants require a higher percentage to be vaccinated. And many experts now believe the U.S. will not reach herd immunity. And now that we really understand the role that these variants are playing and, and how much the, the variants do change the contagiousness of this virus. Herd immunity, herd immunity has become elusive. Herd immunity was the ultimate goal, to vaccinate our way entirely out of the pandemic. Canadian authorities say it's too early to know what level of immunity is possible here. The emphasis is shifting to reducing the number and severity of cases. We could manage this through vaccination such that uh, this is something that affects people uh, at worst like a cold and uh, limits uh, uh, severe illness. Canadians are among the most willing vaccine recipients in the world. Two months ago, an Ipsos survey asked whether people agreed if a vaccine for COVID-19 were available to me, I would get it. In Canada, 79% agreed, a number that has risen more than 20 points since December. In the U.S., only 65% agreed they would get a vaccine if available. If we can get 90% or 95% vaccination, we will be in a hugely stronger position to go back to normal life without seeing deaths and hospitalizations. In the U.S., big crowds without masks are being allowed. And if the virus continues to percolate more so there than in Canada, questions around cross-border travel will persist, including the potential for requiring vaccine passports. Overall, this country may be in a better position to manage the virus. We'll probably be somewhere between control and elimination going forward. This is not over by a long shot. It's just that the acute crisis phase is probably over sometime this year, rendering the long-term management phase. Management that will include vaccines and booster shots in the months and years ahead. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto.